So today I want to answer the question, what's the difference between NLP, neuroscience and psychology and how do they fit together? And this is a genuine question that somebody asked me. So let's start with some definitions. Psychology is generally defined as being the study, or the scientific study, I should say, of the mind and of behaviour. Interestingly, when I did my degree in psychology, which is rather a long time ago, and I went to a very behaviourist school of psychology and they simply said that psychology was the study of human behaviour. The mind didn't really figure that much, I, but I do think it's important. So that's psychology, the study of the human mind and of behaviour. NLP then has lots of definitions, but the official society of NLP definition is that NLP is the study of the structure of subjective experience. So that's rather different. And neuroscience, which didn't really exist when I was doing my degree, we did talk about sort of um, physiological psychology, but neuroscience didn't really exist in the form that it does today. The definition that I like of neuroscience is that it's the study of the nervous system, its structure, its functions, and how it develops. So they're all to do with the mind, but they're all coming from a slightly different perspective. Now, in my experience, having done a degree in psychology, what I learned originally in my degree was a lot of general principles that could be applied to everybody. OK, we did do a bit of personality psychology, so we started looking at some of the differences in the way that people think and behave. But a lot of what we did was about understanding what's true for everybody. And because it was a scientific study, it was also about being objective and about being able to distill out principles that, that we could say, yes, that's definitely true, that's not just my opinion, there is empirical evidence for it. Although, you know, empirical evidence when you're doing experiments in psychology sometimes means sitting in coffee shops and observing where people sit and that kind of thing. It's not necessarily sort of stuff that you would do in a science lab. <clears throat> now, as I say, neuroscience at the time was all about the sort of physiological side of psychology. It was about understanding the structure of the nervous system, about different parts of the brain, about the neurotransmitters, the chemicals that move around in the brain and the nervous system and so on. And so that was just a small part of the overall subject of psychology. An important part, obviously, but it was a subset of the subject. Some years later, when I discovered NLP, and NLP is all about subjective realities, that was a real revelation to me because unlike general psychology where we're looking for what are the things that are true of everybody, what I was getting here was why are people different from each other and what's true for this person that's not true for the next person. And this whole idea that we have our own subjective version of reality, that we essentially live in a world that nobody else shares, that was a really interesting concept. And so I've come to feel that the two things for me kind of interlock and work together quite nicely. That on the one hand, I've got the scientific objective approach to psychology. And on the other hand, I've got the more subjective view. And some of the NLP that I've learned has explained some of the things that frustrated me when I was learning psychology as an academic subject. So sometimes you do an experiment and we'd get a sort of, you know, well, 95% of people did what we expected them to do, and therefore that kind of supports the hypothesis. And sometimes I used to think, what about the other 5%? What was going on for them? <laughs> and, uh, you know, one of my professors used to say, oh, put it down to experimental error. And I was never quite satisfied with that. But having learned NLP, what I, what I now can do is sometimes I can see that there is a reason why there were some exceptions and why 5% of the people did something a bit different. So I found that very helpful. <clears throat> and as time went on, and I then started to learn a bit of neuroscience, what I think neuroscience has done for me, with apologies to all the neuroscientists who would see it as having a very different purpose, but what it's done for me is it's helped me to understand how and why some of the NLP techniques work. Because there are things in NLP, like the phobia model and so on, that, that way back in the early days, people were very sceptical about. Like, well, how, how can you possibly get rid of somebody's phobia in just 40 minutes when all the therapies that we know about take a long time? You know, desensitization therapy takes an hour a week for months, sometimes years. 
and yet now we have this process that works in about 40 minutes. How can that be true? Well, the neuroscience now can explain that. And so it's really helpful to me that, that we understand more about what's going on in the brain because you don't just have to take my word for it that these things work. You know, there is now some, some scientific basis, if you like. So how do they all fit together? I think what they have in common is that NLP, neuroscience and psychology are really all about the mind. They're about how what goes on in our head drives our behaviour. And ultimately, when you pull them all together, they give us some understanding about ourselves, about other people, and potentially give us the opportunity to make better choices in life. So there you have it. Mm-hmm.